Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Love Love Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to take our menu skills up a notch as we actually have a custom menu item to toggle the developer tools. So not only is this going to be a new custom menu item, but it's going to have a keyboard shortcut and it's going to have an action when you click it or when you do that shortcut. So let's get started on that right now. Okay, so in the last video, we dove into the menu system. We created a template and we assigned that template to our application, allowing our application to have a custom menu here. And we have file and folder up top here. This speech will be going away after we refresh our application if you haven't already, uh, which I have not. In this video, we're gonna be talking about events and keyboard shortcuts on this kind of menu item. And we're going to be doing so by actually creating a menu item for developers. So to do that, we're going to head all the way to the bottom after help, and we're going to have comma and a new object in here where the label is going to be developer. And this label is also going to have a sub menu, just like we've seen before. This is going to be an array, just like we've seen with another object in here. And we're going to have another label, okay? And this label is going to be Toggle Developer Tools, okay? Now, Toggle Developer Tools is going to have a couple of new properties that we haven't seen yet. For instance, it's going to have an accelerator, okay? Now, an accelerator is just a dumb name for a keyboard shortcut. So uh, if you see the word accelerator, don't get confused here. It's a keyboard shortcut. In addition, we also have a click function, which we can define as simply just click parentheses brackets. And anything that we do inside of this will actually fire off when we click it. For instance, we can see this in action just by simply doing a console log here. It's not exactly scientific. Hello. Okay. Let's do this. And let's start and stop our application to see this thing in action. This amazing console log here. Okay, I'm gonna have my application here. I'm gonna actually move my app window over here so we can see my command line. I'm gonna select developer. Let's select toggle developer tools. And we see hello being output in the console. Now where we won't be seeing output in the console is in the actual Chrome developer tools console. Because just like the distinction between client and server side that we have in web, anything that takes place in the main process is going to be logging out here, where anything that takes place in the renderer process is going to be happening in the log up here, just sort of like a client server sort of thing. Okay, so check it out. This is interesting. We now have an event that's actually happening when we click this thing. Now it's a dumb event, but it's an event. Now what we want to do is actually toggle developer tools. Now to toggle the developer tools, we have access to those on the main window. Now the main window is what we defined way, 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 way up here. Main window equals new browser, okay? Well, we actually defined it right here, but we set the value as the new browser window. But we have access to main window has a whole bunch of stuff on it. And one of those things on it is dot web contents. And then in addition to web contents, we also have dot toggle dev tools, which is going to be a method here of the web contents. So when we click this, it's going to fire off on the main window. Hey, toggle those developer tools. Okay. Let's go ahead and stop our process and let's restart it with yarn electron. Let's see our application open up and let's now come into developer and select toggle developer tools. And if everything went correctly, you should be seeing your good old friend Chrome developer tools here, along with all of our elements, our console and everything that we could possibly want to have here. Uh, so check it out. This is Chrome developer tools like we've come to know it. Now we don't necessarily have our extension. So if you have react developer tools installed on here, it's not here. We have performance, memory applications, security sources, network, all of this good stuff so that we can actually see how our application is functioning and it's working super nicely. We can even debug CSS stuff, all that good stuff. So this is wonderful. I mean, Chrome developer tools are now here and we can toggle them on and off in Chrome developer tools or toggle developer tools in our developer tools menu. 
That's great. But let's say we wanted to do the toggling with a shortcut. So this is a good opportunity to teach shortcuts as well. We have click functions and shortcuts on menu items. So how do we add our own shortcut? Well, we have to define an accelerator. And it's such an official name, accelerator, okay? And what we wanna be doing is having a different uh, keyboard shortcut per platform here. Now, typically we would just define an accelerator as a string. And we could have these as a string. Let's say you wanted to be command for Mac and control for Windows. You could have an option be CMD or CTRL plus O or any other character, right? I use O because we're going to be using this one later, uh, this exact accelerator. And this is saying, hey, it's going to be the command or the control key plus O. Now, the way you can use as accelerators, you may have guessed it, but those are going to be very well documented in the docs here. And we simply would just want to go to docs and select accelerator. It's the very first one on the list. And we can see every available thing. We have available modifiers or CMD, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we have available key codes and, well, the or command or control which represents a command on Mac OS, Control, Linux, or Windows. So the only time you have this command or control or CMD or control is very specifically when you want to do it as a cross-platform thing. In this instance, the cross-platform shortcut is a bit more complex than this, right? It's not a command or a control. It's Alt-Command-I versus Shift-Control-I. I mean, these are just the standard keyboard shortcuts for opening up DevTools on Windows or Mac. So we can actually use our process.platform equals Darwin once more uh, that was built in here. And we can say process.platform is triple equals to Darwin. And that's going to be a ternary operator. So we can do a question mark here. So if this is true, as in if we're on Mac OS, we want it to be alt, uh, not alt, alt plus command plus I, okay? Whereas if we were on a Windows, we could do control or the uh, colon here, and we can say CTRL plus shift plus I. Now say you're constructing these keyboard shortcuts, sort of like how you'd think about them. It's alt plus command plus I, right? And let's just have a comma here. And let's save this. It's gonna put this on its own line. Let's stop our process and restart it like this. Okay, and if we head to developer, you're gonna see something interesting. On the platform that we're at, it's already given us the keyboard shortcut directly next to the command. We didn't have to do anything to tell it that. As long as the accelerator is there and it works, we know that it's going to work. So if we want to toggle these tools, we can now actually try this shortcut, which was, I believe, command option I. Uh, let's go ahead and command option I and see if this opens it. You'll notice that we did get a little flash up in the menu as well as it opened the developer tools. So initializing these kind of things not only uh, give us the icon in the menu, but it also enables the keyboard shortcut to work across the entire thing. And you'll see in a minute when we add our opening file one, you can define all sorts of different accelerators that aren't already being used by the application. And you can trigger any of your menu functions directly from these accelerators. So we did a lot of things in this video. We created a new label. We created a new submenu. We have a new item. And for the very first time, we've added interactivity to our menu items. And we've added keyboard shortcuts or accelerators to our menu items as well. Now, a lot of this time we've been working on main.js, so we're stopping and starting and stopping and starting. And sometimes you might be wondering, hey, can I like do things on the client side or is it all going to be uh, on the main process side? Well, I'll be definitely showing you how you can communicate the, between the two, but also run sort of node stuff from the front end or the renderer process of your site. So now that we have dev tools up and going, we have shortcuts for menu items, and we have some a little bit more understanding about how this works. In the next video, what actually we're gonna be doing is working with our file system 
and we're going to be opening a, an actual file in this application. After we open that file, we're going to be talking about how we can send the contents of that file from the main process to the client or the render process. And that's a, a, a definitely a feature and a tool you're going to be using quite frequently. From there, we're going to be loading up this thing. We're going to be building a markdown editor. We're going to be loading directories instead of just files. We're going to have files automatically being found in those directories. We're going to have a full on editor in this thing. It is going to be awesome. And so after we get all that, you're going to, by the end of it, you're going to have a full on working journaling application that we can bundle up and you can elaborate on, you can do all sorts of stuff, but it's basically going to edit and save markdown files. It's going to have auto saving. It is going to be serious business. Okay. So check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one as we dive into some heavier stuff as we open an actual file in this application.